Hi. Hey. <laughs> I'm a 17-year-old poet. Uh, my name is Mustafa, and I'm from the Region Park community. And uh, it's an honor to be here today sharing the stage with such a wealth of knowledge. And um, I don't regularly sit down before a performance or before a talk, but um, I'm so happy that I did today because there was just so much that I learned from. Uh, human rights, uh, it was such a broad topic, and I'm... Uh, I'm so humble that I was chosen to come here and speak about my perspective. When I thought human rights, I began to ask my friends what human rights means to them. And a lot of them said they didn't know. Actually, all of them said they didn't know. Some said it didn't exist. It didn't exist around the world. But I knew that it did. And I knew that it's something that I think that we'd like to believe is universal. But it's not. Because there's a difference between laws that are placed and laws that are enforced. A huge difference between laws that are in place and laws that are enforced. And the ones that are enforced are enforced by the people. And so one topic that a lot of people touched on today were the now 300 girls, about 300 girls that were stolen in Nigeria. And I did my best to raise awareness you know, amongst, amongst my classmates in my school and my community. But what I really took from it was the Twitter hashtag. Bring back our girls. It wasn't bring back their girls. It wasn't bring back her daughter. It was bring back our girls. And so what, when you, when, what happened was when they did that, it was just inclusive. It was that inclusivity, and you just, you just feel that entitlement, and you, just, you, feel, you feel like you're a part of something greater. And what that is, is that, that family of humanity... And I think that's where human rights begins. Human rights begins with humanity. Like I can talk to my friend and I know that human rights is something that was adopted by the political world. And so a lot of people, they would connect it back to that. They connect it back to the definition of, uh, that United Nations would have for it. But for me, it's about something that just happens between two people. It's these underlying laws of the universe that we have when we are just born. I'm not going to turn to my friend when he insults me and tell him, hey... You just violated Human Rights Code 27356. <laughs> revoke your statement. Because if he doesn't revoke his statement, I'll probably violate another Human Rights Code, and that doesn't solve our issue. What my goal, my goal is to help him understand, force him into understanding, because that's the most important thing. I want him to understand why it is that I feel that way. Because if we're able to trigger our minds and stimulate our minds and, and just, just try and understand, because we have the ability to do that. We have the ability to understand something. And when we understand and wrap our head around a concept, we begin to feel it with our heart. And it made so much sense to me. Human rights begins with human. And I think a lot of people think it's a given that when you're born, you're a human. But no, because being a human, with being a human comes a lot of responsibility. It's about using your heart and using your mind and not disregarding the emotional aspect of your heart. Because I may have another friend who takes pride in being heartless. I'm heartless. Of course, they need their heart to pump blood throughout their body. They need that biology to, to, to exist, to, to be alive. But they may disregard that part. But you can't. Because now that you, your soul is in this body, you have to be able to use every aspect of your body. That emotional, that emotional aspect, the aspect that helps you think, that helps stimulate your mind. And so that's what I try to do through poetry. Because I'm a poet and I'm an artist, and that's what I try to do. Because I know that the arts, what it does, it, it, is, like, it triggers so much different emotions that other things can do. That sometimes that math couldn't do for me, that science couldn't do for me, the arts, it did that for me. Even my two-year-old nephew will look at me when I'm hurt, and I'll turn to him and I'll be like, listen, owie, I have an owie on my finger. And he'll look at me and he'll read. He'll look at me, he'll read the emotion, or he'll read my hand and he'll read my face, and he'll understand, hey, my uncle's going through something right now. And he'll kiss my hand, and he'll kiss it, and he'll kiss it, and he'll kiss it. And he's like, is it better? And I'm like, yes, it's better. Because you know why? Because he put himself in that position. That it's that innate trigger that just puts yourself there. It puts yourself there because you have that. Everyone has that em uh, empathetic drive, that sympathetic drive. And he had that as well because he knows that when he's hurt, I'm going to kiss his finger. 
and you know, sometimes he was never hurt and he just wanted a kiss on his finger, but that's not the point. It's the fact that he knows that a kiss is just great and everyone wants to be kissed. And so that's why I'm going to move on. And I'll tell you why I was so, I'm so happy that I was here sitting down today. It's, of course, to, to hear all of the amazing speakers, but Ian Brown, I'm happy I heard you today. Because what I'm going to be touching on right now and the piece that I'm going to be sharing today is on mental health. And it's about me opening myself up. I open, and so that's what I do when I'm in the, in the writing process. I try to make myself as vulnerable as possible. And I knew that I had a lot of people in my life who were suffering from mental health issues, mental health disabilities, and I didn't know why. And it was not something that I understood, so it was hard for me to feel for them. So I had conversations with mothers. I had conversations with those patients. And my sister worked at CAMH at the time. And I went in there, and I tried to do some work over there. And I just really wanted to understand. I made myself as vulnerable as possible. And every time I perform it, I try to put myself back there so that other people can feel as well. So without further ado, this piece is entitled Invisible Disabilities. Invisible disabilities they can see Wheelchairs for happiness they can see Crutches for relaxation they can't see in visible disabilities. He said it's an internal battle. And that everyone in his army is half willing and blind. That he fights with doubt wrapped around his own ankles. Alongside his heart, his opponent, his own mind. He locked on his waist a metal shackle. Because at times he cannot resist the temptations of the other side. Sleep is the only thing his peace is enshrined in. Trapped in the darkness of anxiety, searching, depending on a temporary light to shine in. And after the lies that he once lay close with, he finally accepted his diagnosis. And all they did was confine him and so did their words. Bullies. Bullies with big poisonous claws, sharpened using insults that even he thought defined him. He just wanted people to see him. As he fought in this invisible war for his sanity. Because they needed to know that when he is laughing, it's in agony. That when he's hyperactive, his illusions are wrestling with his reality. That his depression spirals from past experiences that ended tragically. That his medication strips him of emotion. Hence why he doesn't socialize naturally. That he can't accept himself anymore. Because he looks into the mirror with the lenses of humanity and they never gave him a chance. He forgot how to enjoy himself and no one is willing to teach him or give him that chance and so all he has left is a, da is a dance. Here's a dance. A contemporary dance with his illusions, his confusion makes him sweat. Left, forth, beginning new sets. Every rotation another will get and Every rotation another is upset and Every rotation comes another hope for his own death to come. And he's a son. And so what happens when a mother holds the hand of a child but can't touch him anymore? When she knows of the battle he fights inside but is still blindfolded in this war. When she tries to sympathize but, level, but her level of understanding is too poor. What happens when a mother tries to brush joy on a child's emotions that were already destroyed at the core? When a mother and son's relationship cannot be maintained. When any relationship a child had cannot be restored. When a boy can't even love himself like he did once before. So he tries to sing invisible disabilities they can't see. Stitches for laughter they can't see. Band-aids for hope they still can't see invisible disabilities. So he watches the hands on the clock struggle to keep four. There are too many reasons to be grieving, so his river of tears have lost their course. His eyelashes have felt more liquid than the clouds because the thread of his explanations are constantly cut short. He once felt like a child, once felt loved, was seen as nothing less than amazing. But now the sun screams in horror at his fire, raging, and its rays curve away from his eyes, a blazing. See, they see vile, but no one is correctly gazing. See, this young boy carries the weight of a mountain on his body. 
But all they see is a backpack and so who's the one not engaging were disengaging. Alienating him from a sense of normality, he sees a door for the physically handicapped and it's opening automatically, but his door is yet to be created. So he doesn't know how to enter society. Invisible disabilities you will never see. You will never see. And it's not something you must see, it's something you must know exists. That the invisible first aid kits and band-aids and crutches and wheelchairs are coming. And this boy must know that we'll care. That the battle will be fought with those that can feel. And that's far better than those that can just see. So let us use love and compassion to make visible, invisible disabilities because human rights, however you may define it, however the United Nations may define it, however the world may define it, don't ever let that influence or replace our natural ability as human beings to be compassionate, understanding, and empathetic. Thank you.